this video will be a little bit different than some of the videos that are on this channel because it is related to something uh, more gaming specific. I am a little bit of a video game player, but this is a little bit different. So I thought it was worth uh, talking about here on the channel. About two weeks ago, maybe a little bit longer, this thing popped up into my consciousness, the Anbernic RG35XX. I think that's how you pronounce that. Anbernic? Anbernic? Which syllable do you put the emphasis? There is no way to know. For $59.99, basically what this thing is, is a retro handheld console. Obviously, it looks a lot like an old school Game Boy, but it does have, you know, triggers on the back, so forth and so on. And evidently, this thing can pretty much, these pictures are very misleading. This is not what your graphics are going to look like. But it is capable of emulating, it's not going to play Red Dead Redemption 2, uh, or soccer games. This imagery is, is terrible. But these are the consoles that it is capable of emulating. The ones I am most concerned with, probably Game Boy Advance, if I'm being totally honest with you, because that's one of my all-time favorite consoles. So for $55.99, I think is what it was, I went ahead and I purchased... Uh, which one was it? The gray one. This one here that looks like an old Game Boy. I purchased this thing, like I said, about two weeks ago, and I waited and I waited and I waited, and the tracking was absolutely terrible, okay? Uh, according to my tracking, this thing has been in Atlanta, Georgia for almost a week, yet here it is in my hand. It was just delivered, so let's crack this thing open, take a look at it. You can hopefully share in my excitement, and uh, I'll give you some impressions on what I think about this thing, and maybe even a review later on if it does call for this. The Ann Burnick, Ann Burnick, Ann Burnick model number RG35XX. Now, before I go any further, I do know, I'm fully aware, that there are other retro handhelds that are probably better than this one, more powerful, uh, whatever you want to say, okay? There was something about the appearance of this one, however, uh, that spoke to me. I cannot exactly say what it is, but there's something about the size, the shape, whatever, that just spoke to me with this handheld console, so it is the one that I went with. Okay, so here it is in the in the box here, and it is, it's actually thicker than I expected it to be. I don't know what I was expecting, but it does look a little bit thicker. Some instructions, it looks like there's a screen protector in there, and I believe, I'm going to guess this is probably like a USB-C cable, because I believe it does charge over USB-C. Yep, it is an A to C cable. I will add that to my collection of 437,000 uh, USB A to C cables. Let's put this back in here and let's open this thing up. It looks really white from inside the bag, and that is because there's some foam on it. That makes sense. I was, I was a little bit, you know, concerned about how it looked, uh, but now I am no longer concerned. Okay, what do I think of this thing in my hands? I think. This thing looks really, really cool. What do the buttons feel like? Okay, so the D-pad is fairly mushy. I think that this is like a rubber membrane, um, so it's not super clicky. It feels, it feels decent. The buttons are really similar. The buttons are strangely enough glossy, whereas uh, the D-pad and the start select and the menu buttons are not glossy. That is weird. There is an HDMI, a mini HDMI out up here, which is hilarious in case you want to plug this into your TV. Um, power, reset, there is an SD card, and then an expansion, like a second SD card slot, uh, headphone jack, USB-C to charge, volume, triggers, which I'm not sure how much I'm going to use, but they are there. Um, I think that this thing looks really, really cool. Let's do like a size comparison here. So here's a, a Z Fold 4 um, for comparison. I don't really have anything else better to compare it to. I guess I could grab like an Xbox controller. So this is the GameSir controller that I just now reviewed, so you can kind of get a sense of the scale there. Let's see if it's got enough charge to power on. It is quite cold. So I'm going to hold on this power button and see if it will power up, and it will, Anbernic. Okay, so just from that right there, I feel like the screen looks okay. Um, that's not so bad. Game Rooms, Favorites, History, Search, and then Settings. There's quite a terrible sound there. Let's immediately go into Settings and go to button sound, and here's some interesting stuff. The button sound, your options are open and close. So I'm assuming close is going to mean off. Okay, we're, we're in better shape there. Okay, game rooms, and you can see here, PS1, vertical arcade, CPS, Neo Geo. Let's just go into Game Boy Advance, and you can see here, this thing is, oh my goodness gracious, guys. It is absolutely full of games. Oh my lord, this is unbelievable. And then, of course, you're also going to be able to add games to this, ROMs of your own. One of the things I'm looking forward to doing, like, a ton are, I love playing 
uh, Pokemon ROM hacks, which are where you take uh, something like Pokemon, you know, Fire Red version, and then it's been modified to make it different, to make it harder, whatever it might be. And uh, that's what you're going to do. You'll be able to play in a more difficult state. So let's go ahead and let's let's go back to search and we'll launch a game real quick. And we'll go into probably what is going to be the most difficult for it to do, which is PlayStation 1. And we will do... So this is Crash Bandicoot 2. Why did I pick Crash 2? Couldn't tell you. It's just what I picked. And I guess this menu button will take you back into here. We can do save states, restart game. There are visual effects. You can also change the brightness level, which might be smart for me to do here to make this a bit more visible on screen. Bios. Vibration. There's a vibration motor in here. Unbelievable. Okay, let's get into the game now. Okay, so the speakers, or I guess I should say speaker, doesn't seem too bad at all, actually. That is, I think that's going to be totally sufficient. And of course, in this instance, because this is a PlayStation game, B is going to be like X. So that will be how we will move forward. And you can see you're on this little screen, guys. Like, this looks pretty good, right? I mean, it's obviously, it's a PlayStation game, so it doesn't look good in terms of, like, modernity. But in terms of what this screen is able to do, this is a sharp this is a sharp little screen, and of course, these retro games, this is kind of what TVs were back in the day. They weren't, you know, widescreen, so this makes a lot of sense. Is there a way to tell the battery charge? Okay, so it looks like there's just up in the corner, just like a battery. I wish it was more of like a like a percentage instead of just a graphical thing, but, you know, whatever, that's fine. So I'm in that little hub world, and I can run around using the D-pad. Of course, the original, some of the early PlayStation games did not have uh, the joysticks, so they should work fine on this thing. I gotta remember how to play Crash Bandicoot, so I guess it's really like X and Circle. Take that, you armadillo. The performance is really good for this PlayStation game. Like, this is totally smooth, I, you know? Absolutely playable, which tells me that any sort of Game Boy Advance game, which again, you know, Pokemon is really like all I'm looking to do on this thing, <laughs> to be totally honest with you, is gonna be fine. And then at any point, we can hit our menu button, and we can save game into a slot. And then at any point from then on, I don't have to go through any loading. I don't have to save it in the game. I don't have to do anything special at all. I just fell down a hole into, into a bonus level. Uh, let's do this really quickly. And then what I can do is I can hit that. I can go to load game and load. And I'm right back where I just now was. That is really, really cool. Now, I don't know what happens if you plug this thing into a computer. So I'm going to plug it into a computer. And it, does it do like file transfer? Because I have some ROM hacks I would like to place on this thing. But it does not appear. Maybe there's like a, maybe you have to like go into like a, like a file transfer mode. Okay, so I, maybe I'm missing something, but it doesn't appear that you can just plug this thing directly into a computer and access the files. So I powered it off and I'm going to pop out this little a uh, micro SD card, which is like super duper, not labeled at all, no branding whatsoever. And I'm going to uh, plug this into a hub and see if we can do some stuff. Okay, so here we go. There, it just popped up here and it said miscellaneous, which I'm guessing is like, uh, go away, Google Drive. I'm guessing is just like system stuff. And then there's another partition on this card that's called ROMs, simple as that. So then we're gonna go back to my personal handful of ROMs. We're going to go into Game Boy Advance. Okay, and I've put my ROM hacks onto the card. We're going to grab the card, put it back in the thing. If it's really that simple, I'm going to, I think, be quite pleased with this. Let's power back up and let's see what we have. I also strategically named them such that they should be at the top under GPA but they are not, and they're not at the bottom either. Hmm, I wonder where they might be. Okay, let's try searching for them. Pokemon, okay, so Fire Red Omega and Pokemon Radical Red are both there, and we're gonna favorite both of them with the Start button. Let's fire up Fire Red Omega, and let's see if this, oh man, guys, this is gonna be really, really cool. Oh my goodness gracious. Well, I know what I'm doing today. So if you don't know, Fire Red Omega is an edit of Pokemon Fire Red that incorporates all 386 Pokemon of the third generation. It's, it's revamped. It's more difficult. It's, it's, in my opinion, one of the best Pokemon games. And there's many other ROM hacks that I will probably try out as well. Uh, this is really, really cool. Now, one thing I do need to do here really quickly. Let's quickly save 
where I just was. Let's exit game. And now that I've searched for it, perhaps that like refreshes things, right? Maybe that's like a refresh and it'll show up now. It did. They show up now. So once you've searched for them, it'll like refresh your listing and it will now appear. So for this video, I think that's all I'm going to do. I'm actually going to go through the ROMs on this card. and I'm going to probably delete a lot of them that I'm never going to play just to simplify my life a little bit. I don't like excess clutter. So we're going to get rid of some stuff. And then maybe I'll do a full review. I'll give it, you know, a few days, maybe a week. And I'll actually use this thing. And if you guys want to see a review, drop a comment down below. And we'll jump into battery life and, and, and all that, you know, good stuff in a full actual review. I will put a link to this thing in the description down below. If you want to take a look at it yourself, you'll be able to do that. Not an affiliate link or anything like that. I won't make any commission off of that sale, uh, but it'll be there if you want to take a look at it. Guys, thanks for watching. Subscribe so that you don't miss on that potential review when it does happen. I'll see you on the next one. And until next time, stay nerdy, my friends.